Hey guys, today I want to show you how we can work with the TinyDB. TinyDB is a tiny document-oriented database that is easy to use. It has a really nice and clean API and I personally use this too in my own projects. So you shouldn't use this if you need advanced features or if performance is critical, but I think the TinyDB is perfect for personal projects where you need to store some data. And by the way, this is open source, so you can find this on GitHub and it currently has 3,400 stars, so it's very popular. And yeah, so let's start. So in order to install this, you can use pip. So let's say pip install tiny db. And in my case, I've already installed this and then you are good to go. So the first thing you want to do is to to say from tinyDB import the actual tinyDB and we also import query which I will explain in a second. And then we set up our database so we say db equals tinyDB and then the file name. So as I said this is document oriented so you can use any file here and Usually you want to use a JSON file, so I call this db.json. And now if I run this, then we see that the tinyDB already created this JSON file for us, which has a dictionary here, and it has an empty dictionary with the key default. So what we can then do, for example, we can print all items by calling db.all and right now we see that this is an empty list so let's fill our database and we can do this by saying um, so let's create a function for this let's say insert and here what we want to do is we call db.insert and then we give it a dictionary and here, let's say in this example, we want to have a user. So we give it a name. And in this case, let's say, let's call this user John. And then it also has the key H and the value 28. So now if we call this insert function and run this, then we see that we have our user in our database. So let me copy this and paste this two more times. So let's create also a user, let's say max and he is 25. And let's also use Sarah and she is um, 21. And she also has an additional key value pair. So for Sarah, we also have the city and the city is, let's say, New York so they don't have to be the same format so this works fine so now um, if I run this then we see we also have Sarah in our database and now we see that we have two times John because I ran the code two times so in order to delete this first we can call db.purge so um, if we just purge the database and print db all and we see that it's empty again. And now let's insert our three um, users. And then we see we have all the three users in our database. And if we have a look at the JSON file, then we see um, we have our users here. And for each user, we also have an ID here and I will show you how we can use this later. So yeah, so this is how we can insert users. So now, now let's talk about how we can search users. So for this I call the query and I call the query user equals query and then we can use this. So let's create another function. Let's call this search. And here what we can do is we can call db search. So we say results equals db search. 
and then we can call the query object and then we can call the keys here as an attribute so we can say user dot city equals equals New York so it should search for all the users where the city is New York and then this will return a list so we can iterate over this or we can simply print um, results and now here if we um, call the search function and let me comment this out too then it should print Sarah and of course we called db purge first so let's comment the purge out and, and let's insert all and now it worked so this is how we can search for users and here you can use any um, any condition that you want for example we can also search for users with an age greater than 21 so let's say results equals db dot search and then here we say user dot age is greater than 21 and then let's print these results and let's comment this out so now if we run this and let's only search here then we see that it found john and max which are both older than 21 so this is correct and yeah so this is how we can search for objects in our database now let's talk about how we can update our users so for this let's create another function define update and here what we can use is we can say db dot update and then here um, what we want to update so here we put in a dictionary again so let's say age is um, let's say max is 25 now so let's say the key is age and the value is 26 and then we want to do this for our user max so we say user dot name equals equals max and then um, let's comment this out and let's call the update function and then um, so right now if I don't call update and if I print all then we see that max is 25 so now let's call update and then print all and then we see that max is 26 so this worked and this is how we can update our users um, then there's also a second way how we can do this so first for example we can search for all the users that um, match the condition so we say results equals and then uh, the same as here so we say db.search and here we want to say user.name equals equals and then max and then we loop over this so we say for rest for result in results and then we simply access the key so we say res name and then this is equal now let's say 27 and then after we have updated this we have to write this back to our database so we have to call db and then write back and then the results that we retrieved first and then this worked too so now let's run this again and then um oh here you see i made a mistake so i set the name to 27 so now let's set the name to um, max again and let's set the results to uh, the age to 27 and now it doesn't have the user with the name max anymore so we have to say our name equals equals 27 in this case 
And now let's run this. And this didn't work because this is not a string. So we have to search for 27. And now we have the correct state. So now we have John uh, Max, which is now 27. And we still have Sarah. So this is how we can update our database. And now let's also talk about how we can delete users. So let's comment this out and let's create another function delete. And here what we can call is we can simply say db remove. And then again, we want to search. So we say user dot name equals equals Sean. And if it found this user, then it can remove it. So now let's call the delete function down here. And now let's print this. And then we see we don't have John in our database anymore. So yeah, that's all the important methods that you should know. And with this, I think you have a lot of functionality with that you can work. Um, now let me also show you what how you can use this um, document ID here. Um, for example, if I perch the database and insert the three, then um, I have the document IDs one, two, and three. But sometimes I want to delete one in the middle. For example, I want to delete um, max in this case. So let's call the delete function where the name is max. And um, let's comment this out and comment this out. Now if I run this, then we see we don't have the document ID two here anymore. And now if I go ahead, then it doesn't reuse the ID two, but it um, continues with the last number. So the next um, document, uh, the next user should have the ID four. So now if I, for example, if I insert another um, max, which is older, let's say he is 40. And then we see that it has the document ID four. And of course, we can also use this document ID to access the entry directly and update it or delete it. So um, let's say um, what I can do here is I can get this document ID item. So now I say item equals db dot get. And then here I say doc ID equals um, four. And then I can print the item. And then we see that this is max. And of course, we can also remove this. So we can call db remove and here um, we can say or we have to say document IDs and then this is a list. So here we can say for example one and two and four. So this would remove all I guess. So no we have one and three and four. So let's remove only one and four and then print db all. So then we see we only have Sarah in our database. And we can do the same thing by saying db dot update. So update and then we have to give it a dictionary. So um, here we want to update. Uh, let's say we only have Sarah. So now let's say the age of Sarah is 22. So let's say age um, and then 22. And then the document IDs here, we only use the document ID um, three. So if we know this, then we can access this directly. And then um, oh, here I have a typo and a comma is missing. 
So then we see that it updated the um, updated the age of Sarah. So the document ID is, for example, use, useful when you are dealing with table data. So you have a table in your application and you click on the row and want to delete this or update this, then mm, you could save the document ID in this row and then you can directly access this. So yeah, that's a little example how we can use the tiny DB. So as you can see, the API is pretty straightforward and it's not so difficult to use. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and do your own little projects with this database. If you like this, then please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.